the wild winter wind blow and blow I'll be as warm as a July tomato Peaches on the shelf, potatoes in the bin Supper ready, everybody come on in Taste a little of the summer Taste a little of the summer Taste a little of the summer My grandma put it all in There's a root cellar, fruit cellar down below You better watch your head now Down you go, peaches on the shelf Potatoes in the bin Supper ready, everybody Come on in and taste a little of the summer Taste a little of the summer Taste a little of the summer My grandma put it all in jars Or maybe you're well weary and you don't give a damn I bet you never tasted a blackberry jam Pizzas on the shelf, potatoes in the bin Supper ready, everybody come on in and taste a little of the summer Taste a little of the summer, taste a little of the summer My grandma put it all in jars She got magic in her, you know what I mean She puts the sun and rain in with her green beans Peaches on the shelf, potatoes in the bin Supper ready, everybody, come on in Now taste a little of the summer Taste a little of the summer Taste a little of the summer My grandma put it all in jars What with the snow, the economy and everything I think I'll just stay down here and eat until spring Peaches on the shelf, potatoes in the bin Supper ready, everybody come on in and taste a little of the summer You can taste a little of the summer You can taste a little of the summer My grandma put it all in jar. Oh, I did love to go down there to my grandparents' little place in Southern Iowa. Kind of a farm, really, my idea of a farm. Mm, kind of 40 acres of brush and trouble, you know. That's probably why I'm so happy up around here. Not a farm, not a, not a your typical Iowa farm, you know. I don't like that, really. It was kind of a subsistence farm, I guess. They always had a couple cows, which me and Roscoe always had to go and find every pasture which was woods I don't know what the cows ate leaves or something I don't know what it was grass really to speak of acorns or something I don't know milk always tasted kind of funny really the thing that kept the uh, farm going except uh, grandma in her big garden grandpa had a sawmill he had a sawmill he ran with a whole steam engine locomotive Grandpa was a brakeman on the steam engine railroads. When the diesels came in, none of the guys really liked the diesels too much. They didn't take any tinkering, you know, they just turn them on and hold on, and away you go. Grandpa liked them old steamers, and he took a steamer, an old steam locomotive, and set it on a little section of track by a creek in Southern Iowa and ran the saw off the steamer. It was a big bell coming off that steam engine, sawed up lumber with them. Yes, there are trees in Iowa. Used to be anyway, before my grandpa come along. I love to go down to the little farm. My mother would usually be driving. The times I remember it would be the holidays, sometime around between Thanksgiving and Christmas. My mother would be driving. We had a brand new Ford with a T-Bird engine, a two-tone hardtop convertible. She was driving about 70 miles an hour out over those roads with all those signs that said gravel ends. You don't see those too much anymore. She'd be driving real fast out over those butterfly hills. Those butterflies hill. When we were kids, you'd go up over, oh, over those hills. Like that. Deal on the way back down on the other side. I like that. My mother be driving. I felt perfectly safe in the back seat there, watching her drive, putting on her lipstick, looking in the rearview mirror. At the same time, I was impressed. We come skidding into the front yard in a cloud of red dust with the lights flashing and the horn honking and my grandma was always the first one out of the house. She had good hearing, I guess. She was always the first one out, which was very 
good. I really wanted to see my grandma. I loved my grandma so much. She was an Irish woman. She'd come out of that house doing a jig with this rag thing she wore in her head flying back in the wind and her flippity floppity egg gathering shoes would be flippity floppity. You knew it was the holidays. I felt so good. I'd always try and get out of the car and give her a hug and a kiss and get out of there before the ants came out of the house. But I don't think I even made it one time. Here would come the ants. I don't know. It was an amazing, awesome thing to watch, all these ants come out of that little house. It was a little tiny, low built to the ground, little southern Iowa house. No, just that root cellar, no basement or anything. Foundation was like, well, try some of that. A little low built to the ground house. But here'd come all these ants tumbling out of there. It's like watching people come out of a Volkswagen or a phone booth or something. It just didn't seem possible. All these big bucks and big hips strapping Southern Iowa women coming out of that house. Yeah, they came, the uncles, uh, they never hardly made it out once. I don't know, they smothered or something. I don't know. Uh, all these big bucks and strapping, strong Southern Iowa women were all married to these little tiny, tiny skinny guys. That was just the, that was the cool couple down there. And, uh, the uncles never made it out, but here would come the ants and I'd try and give my grandma a hug and a kiss and get away before the ants got there. But they always got me. Usually Aunt Virgie would get me first. So, big woman, she grab me and pull me right down in between there. Bam! And I'd try and be a cool little macho, tough little dude, you know? And say to myself, I'll be all right. Shoot, I'll get out of this deal. Don't worry about me. I'm okay here. I can handle this. I can't breathe or nothing, but... I'm gonna be all right. I know I will. I know. Nobody ever got bosomed to death. I know that much. So shoot, I'll be all right. I'll be okay, probably. Just when you're beginning really panicky, all I could smell was perfume. All I could hear were these little squeaky sounds coming from far away. <laughs> Just when you begin really panicky, they'd let you go. Get a breath of air, and then the next thing, I'd grab you, bam, right down. You'd go again. I was just at that age, you know, where I was starting to get kind of curious about what it'd be like to be down in between there. But it's like too much knowledge all at once. I couldn't, I couldn't process it. You'd end up spinning out across the yard in a dream of bosoms and perfume. And then you get to the edge of the woods, which was the edge of the yard, and us cousins, us boys, we'd form a pack, and away we'd go into the woods. We were free. We were free. Once we got about five feet into the woods, we were free. Like only kids can be free. We were free. We were outside. We were gone. We were running through the woods in our imagination at the same time. It was a great place to be. We were free. There was no time. We were outside of time. We were free. Had wild adventures all day long. It seemed like an endless day. And then all of a sudden, it would seem like a short day. We'd hear Grandma's voice coming out across the hill. Supper's ready, you boys. Come on in now. That called us back to the real world. That called us back. And we took off. We never questioned that voice. That was the voice. We took off running back through the woods and through the pasture, what there was of it down by the creek and up to the holler out behind the back porch door. We skidded to a stop right outside the circle of the back porch light. It was a yellow back porch light. We put on the brakes and we stood there breathing hard right outside that circle of light. We wanting to go in, we were hungry, we were boys, we were starving, we wanted to eat, but we didn't really want to go back to civilization and this discontents, you know. I'll have to wash and stuff like that. It's... Plus it wasn't dark yet. It wasn't dark, that was a deal. You had to go in when it was dark. Well, it wasn't dark. It was adult dark, which is different when you're sitting inside, you know, looking out through the window. It might look like it's dark, but if you're out there in it, it's not dark. It was adult dark. They'd been sitting around inside all day, yak, 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 drinking coffee, talking about somebody's gallbladder. They couldn't see nothing. But we were hungry. We knew stuff was gonna be fried chicken. One of the first things we did when we got down there, when we made a swoop past the house, was to help Grandma. We'd catch a couple chickens, and we'd hold them down the chop block, and they'd, she'd cut their heads off, and they'd run around like chickens. With 
we didn't think it was sad or anything. You know, we thought it was funny. We chased them around laughing until they fell over. You know? A chicken, you know. I don't know what you can really say about a chicken. I mean, there's a great uh, South American poet, a Chilean poet named Pablo Neruda. He has many beautiful poems. He has one poem called On Weariness, in which he speaks of all the things he's weary of. He says, I am weary of chickens. They look up at us with their small eyes as though we were unimportant. Which is true. They do. You know. We are. But it's hard to take it from a damn chicken, you know. Uh, some people who are vegetarians, like they will eat chicken. Have you noticed that? See that? A chicken is just real darn close. It's like kind of a cusp species there. So it's kind of like broccoli walking around with a couple of carrots with a tomato on top of it. It's, the, it's in between. It's, well, we knew stuff was going to be fried chicken. We just stood there not knowing what to do. And Grandma was a wise woman. I swear the wisdom we have in this world, I swear, that's where it comes from. It's from the grandmothers. Hand it down. She was wise. She just stood there with that back door open. And this cloud of aroma would come out of the back door. We could see it when we were kids. I don't suppose we'd be able to now. But we, back then we could see it. This cloud of aroma of fried chicken and chicken gravy and fresh homemade bread and corn and beans, maybe some peach pie. It would come directly for us. It did not disperse in the evening air. We could see it. We stood there transfixed. She stood there with a little smile on her face watching the cloud come towards us. And the first boy at here would get this goofy look on his face and he'd say, I'm going in now. I don't know, I just don't, I don't feel like staying on anymore. I'm going in, I'll, I'll see you guys later. He would turn and break from the pack, which was a brave act. Go running up the hill, that would do it. That would dispel the bonds of our little tribe. We'd all be right on his heels. We'd go running through the back door and chicken and milk and boys and dogs and bread and everything would just go flying. When I go down to see Grandma, I gain a lot of weight with her dear hands. It's plate after plate she cans the pickled sweet and dill and the songs of the whippoorwill in the morning dew and the evening moon. I Really gotta go see her soon Cause the canned goods I buy at the store Ain't got the summer in them anymore and You bet grandma as sure as you're born I'll take some more potatoes and a thunderstorm Peaches on the shelf, potatoes in the bed Supper ready everybody Come on in and taste a little of the summer Taste a little of the summer Taste a little of the summer My grandma put it all in what a woman.